So I think we're good. I'm just going to write a comment um, here. But Danica, before we get started, mm -hmm. why don't you introduce yourself before I forget what's going on? Tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Danica Donnelly. I am International United Miss Australia, 2018 and 19. Perfect. Um, and Danica, can you give us a bit of background as to your pageant experience so far, or is this your first um, first pageant? No, it's not. Um, I started pageants about four years ago now, uh, which seems like a long time, but then in the scheme of when you look at American girls, it's quite a short period of time. Um, I started with Miss Galaxy Australia, so I was a state finalist for that. Um, it wasn't something I actually wanted to get into at first. I was a dance teacher at a modelling school and one of the other teachers suggested it to me. So I had previously done Rose of Chile, which isn't a pageant as such, but it goes through the formalities of interview, social appearances, that kind of jazz. What's really funny about that, Danica, is the person I just interviewed last also competed in that, but the Sydney version. <laughs> it's popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so um, I had done that, which gave me like a little bit of a taste. Um, and then my friend at the time was like, come do Galaxy with me. And I was completely against it. I kind of had that stereotypical, you know, girls are stuck up, the glitz pageants, what you see on TV. So it took a lot of convincing. Mm -hmm. um, I finally decided to just give it a go, mainly because I wanted to gain confidence in my body. And I gave it a go. And just that little glimpse from just the States, I kind of was very intrigued. So I continued. I did Face the Globe. I did Miss Diamond. And I just fell in love with it. And now I'm here for IUM. Right. So... Do you know how many patents you've competed in? I mean, you've named a few. I mean, what, what number is this now? Pageant four. Pageant four. <laughs> Pageant four. Okay. Yeah. And obviously with the system that you settled on, um, and mm -hmm. the great thing about the last few interviews, they've, they've been mainly from systems that I haven't heard of before. Um, and the pageant scene, I mean, you've already mentioned America. Obviously, the pageant scene here is smaller than in America. In America, it's yes. massive. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of smaller pageants, or I guess not even necessarily smaller, but just pageants I haven't heard of. So can you tell us more? It's it's the International United Miss System, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. So it's fairly new. Um, so a lot of people in Australia probably haven't heard of it. It was established in 2016. And predominantly up until now, even though it is an international system, it has been mainly American girls. So I am the first contestant to represent Australia. Um, this year, there's also going to be a UK team, so there'll be another international finalist coming across for that as well. Um, but it is directed by Holly and Chrisanne, and I just fell in love with it. I found it on the Pageant Planet. Um, I was looking through new different systems to compete in, and it just stood out to me. It's They've been in pageantry. Chrisanne's competed in pageantry herself, and Holly's had her daughter compete in it, mm -hmm. and they really wanted to create a supportive system, um, something that's very different to what they'd seen and been a part of in the past. And it, it really does, it does stand for that. It's about inner beauty and who you are as a person. And they have an acronym that they have that for the pageant and it's Be Heroic. And it stands for humility, empathy, respect, optimism, integrity, and community. Well done. I think I've got it all. <laughs> I just think it's, just great values to install in young women and it's just i just i love it well give us um it sounds amazing give us an idea as to so you said it, it's different and i guess to be fair to all the other systems that you competed in every system has has its own thing and is unique in some Absolutely. way what what are the sort of the standout parts i mean going into this one you haven't competed yet but you'll be wh no. when are you going overseas uh, in july this year in july so you, you still got four months Ahead, but yes. give us, I guess, the parts of this pageant um, as a competitor going into mm -hmm. it that are maybe a bit different to the pageants that you've competed in in the past. Yeah, I have found this pageant to be extremely supportive. Um, I found in the past there's been information that's been relayed upcoming to the event, but you don't really know what to expect when you get there. Chrisanne and Holly 
every month there is a huge email that gets sent out to all the girls, filling them in, updating them on what's going on, checking in on us. Mm -hmm. There's also a Facebook page and weekly they do live videos, um, checking in on us again, going through each different component of what's going to happen at internationals just so that we have all the information up front. We're aware of what's happening and so that we're not nervous or scared or confused because they honestly want us to get the best experience possible when we get to internationals. And I've never been in the past had so much support going into it and feel so comfortable going into a finals. That is really different um, from mm. system that I mean, I've heard of systems that have Facebook groups, for example, but to actually do calls where the contestants feel supported, that's, yeah. that's highly unusual. So what, what tends to happen on those calls? Uh, so they do a live, live video chat. Um, each week a topic is picked. So for what uh, different criteria, so we go through evening wear, interview, the different optionals. There's also awards nights and different theme nights. So every night there's a different theme. Um, they just run through it, going through what's going to happen, what to wear, what to expect. And because it's live, the girls can tune in and ask questions and they'll answer it up front for us. And have you had any particular questions so far? I mean, if this is your fourth fourth pageant appearance. So at the, at this stage of your career, do you know pretty much what to expect or do you still have sort of um, any any questions or are you nervous at all heading into it? Um, I am nervous just because I've only ever competed in Australia mm -hmm. um, and I know going over to America, it is different. Um, different optionals I've never heard of here in Australia, so it is quite new to me. Um, so it has been very helpful because I can now feel comfortable and know what's happening. Like there's an academic section, there's spokesperson, there's personal introduction, which in Australia we don't predominantly do. Um, you get up and you have to speak about yourself for about 30 seconds mm. and the judges relay that back in your interview um, and can ask questions based on that and, and just the writing of it and how to do it. I've not really done it in Australia, so... It is different. Oh, this, sounds, this sounds hugely different. No, it's a little different. So back up. I mean, you said there was academic and, and there were optional. So first off, tell us, or maybe tell me, I mean, I've heard a little bit about optionals from people who are going overseas as well. I've not really heard of it in Australian system. Everyone has to compete in everything. So what are, what are optionals? So you've got your main um, criteria events that you have to compete in. Mm. So there's interview, um, introduction, fun fashion, although IUM calls it highway. Um, high fashion mm -hmm. and then you've got evening wear and then optionals IUM's amazing in the fact that they've split it into this free optionals so anyone can do it you don't have to pay and then there's also the paid optionals okay um, so the paid optionals you've got events such as photogenic um, spokesperson there's talent casual wear um, things like that and if you are to win, you actually also win a cash prize back because you have paid to enter it. Um, and then there's got your free optionals. So you've got community service involvement, there's academic, there's an essay section as well. So you can write an essay as to what charity or organization that you support. And the winning essay is actually the charity or the organization that IOM will support the following year, which their queens oh, will wow. work towards. Yeah. So is there any reason that you wouldn't enter an optional? I actually am entered in optionals, um, but yeah, I don't know why there's free optionals. I mean, I give mean, it a go. I yeah, mean, it, <laughs> sound, it sounds to me like it's another chance to win something, and I yeah. guess the paid ones. Maybe if you don't want to pay, that's fair. But I mean, if there's free optionals, it sounds like why not? Yeah, get involved. <laughs> but tell me more about this. I mean, you, you mentioned essays, which to me just gives me really bad nightmares about <laughs> Year Twelve English. <laughs> uh, are you entering the essay? And if you are, how's your essay writing? Um, I am. I haven't started writing my essay yet. Um, I do attend university though, so I am quite used to writing essays. I actually actually enjoy writing essays. Oh my god! <laughs> I love picking what, a topic and you? just arguing why I believe in that topic. So, <laughs> what are you doing at university, Danika? I'm studying counterterrorism and security intelligence, and I'm majoring in criminology. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Well, it's not the mouthful. Just tell me again what you're studying. Counterterrorism. Counterterrorism and security intelligence. So it's kind of 
split into three different factors. So you've got your counterterrorism, you've got your security, and then you've also got intelligence. Okay, this sounds really like James, just to leave the pageant world for a sec, this sounds like James Bond or, you know, the Bond supremacy. Like, so what is it that you get to do after you finish your degree here? Um, I do want to go down the intelligence road. So I mainly want to apply for ACES, um, which essentially is human spies. <laughs> so it's the secret intelligence. <laughs> basically, your friends have to make sure that they're not doing anything. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that in itself is fascinating. Um, so to bring it back to the pageant, so it's in July, you said, whereabouts is it being held? Uh, in New Jersey. So at the Stockton Seaview Resort in Galloway. And how many girls are competing roughly, I guess, at this stage? Roughly. I think it's about 30. It is still growing. So there is still state um, and national competitions that are going on. There's also, like me, I'm an optional entrant. So if your state or country or nation doesn't have a state competition, you can apply for the optional. So I've applied through that. So I'm representing Australia. Um, as IUM is still growing, they haven't got competitions in every single state. So girls can write in, fill out a form and apply for the optional. Right. And what sort of criteria, do you, if you know, I guess, were they looking for um, for an entrant from Australia? I mean, you're the first one. Yes. I guess they, must have, they must have still been looking for certain qualities from you. So do you know what qualities they were looking for? I'm not quite sure. Um, I had to fill out a questionnaire um, from memory. Oh, God, I did it back in June last year. Um, yeah. You had to – I think I had to write previous experience, um, why I did pageantry, I think, what I – wanted to gain out of pageantry, um, just your usual predominant questions that you get asked. Um, yeah. And I guess to follow on from that, what are you looking to, to get out from this? I mean, are you one of those people who has a particular result in mind or are you more just you're enjoying the journey, the experience? Up until now, I have honestly been enjoying the experience. I went into pageantry a very shy person would never be able to sit here and do an interview with you. Um, I would start, i go bright red. You know, um, it's so funny. So many people say that and then you present so confidently. It's like, I don't really believe that, but okay. <laughs> We're just so used to doing interviews now. It's just second nature. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've definitely gained a lot of life skills from doing pageantry, um, and which I'm forever grateful for. Now I do want to start getting a little bit more competitive. Mm -hmm. Um Miss Diamond, the last pageant I competed in, I did walk away with Miss Elegance um, title. Mm -hmm. I've never placed in top 10, though, so I am aiming for a top 10 placement. That is where I would really like to end. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, each pageant is continuing your journey onto the next pageant, so you are learning, and I'm learning hugely from this going international. It's the first time I've done this, so I'm taking away a lot of life skills. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, let me ask you this. What what do you see? You mentioned you want to place top 10. What do you see as your strengths as a pageant competitor? IUM is hugely about who you are as a person. That's not about your outer beauty at all. So for me, I think my strength is definitely going to be in interview just because that's kind of where I feel I shine yeah. because I can express who I am. Yeah. And I'm not going to ask you if you have any weaknesses. I think that's a horrible question. But I will ask you, do you are there any parts – that you feel more nervous about? Mm -hmm. um, on stage, funny enough. Um, that seems like quite a major component. Yeah. <laughs> Any part that's on stage. Just in my walk myself, I haven't had a lot of pageantry training. Um, when I started, I had very minimal modeling experience because um, I was a tense teacher yeah. at a modeling school. We did get free modeling classes, but I've never done like – modeling as such so for this pageant i am taking it quite seriously and i've actually gotten myself a pageant coach so i've learned a massive amount already like when i first walked my pageant coach was like no no honey <laughs> so just Those learning like words so just learning like the different different turns different ways to stand um yeah i'm gaining confidence in that so 
you've got a huge advantage, I've got to say. I mean, if you are a dance teacher and you actually know how to dance, which I assume you would, I, I can't like imagine so. that learning how to walk would be particularly difficult no. for you. I do pick up things quite quickly, which um, is quite an advantage, I think. It's huge. I was going to say, if there's an opening number with a badge. There is. It, yeah, yeah, like for you, you could learn that in your sleep and all the other girls are stressing about it. You can go and concentrate on the other things. Yeah, probably my second favourite part to interview an opening number. Love it. You must find – do you find it overly simplistic, the opening number dance? Um, yes and no. I have been in a few which – they do simplify it, which is completely understandable. I mean, you have girls that have zero dancing ability and you're putting them in heels and telling them dance. <laughs> so, um, but I've also been in some great opening numbers where there is some complexity to it. And with RUM, there is, so Holly's daughter um, choreographs it. Mm -hmm. um, I believe she has a dancing background. Um, they actually film it and put it up for us so we wow. can learn it before we get there so we've got a little bit of back experience to it. Cool. Um, and watching last year's one, it, it was a bit complex, so I'm excited. <laughs> but, I mean, you've got it on lock, right? I mean, you watch it once and five minutes later, you, you've got this, right? And your fingers crossed. Don't want to jinx it. <laughs> well, I, I keep coming back, like – the degree that you're studying, I just, I've just i interviewed pageant competitors from a lot of different fields, but I can't say mm -hmm. I've interviewed one that's going to go on to be a secret agent. So, I'm I mean, sorry. I mean, yeah, I, I understand that I'm exaggerating slightly, but can you tell us a little bit more about what you do outside? So you've got the pageantry and you've got what you study. Um, mm -hmm. What else do you do with your life, like the downtime or other hobbies? What else keeps you busy? Um, so I also work part-time. I'm a receptionist at a hotel. Um, so pretty much when I finish uni, I'm either working or especially on the weekend, I usually work a lot. Um, I also love photography. Um, I took that up for a little bit. I've kind of let it go a little bit now, but I do just love getting out, especially going to the beach. Uh, I also love hiking, especially, I don't know if you know, I used to live in Canada. So I used to go on a lot of hikes. So just getting out and traveling and exploring new things and just taking photos. I love taking photos. <laughs> I have been to Canada. I have mm -hmm. been to near Quebec. I, can't yeah. remember, I think it was called North Hadley. So it's a, it was a very small suburb. I went there in the middle of winter. <laughs> it was freezing cold. <laughs> yes, Everyone yes. there is extremely proud of their maple syrup. They are, yes. <laughs> Apparently the good stuff comes in cans. Um, can you tell us more about your background, though? So I know, know that when we were emailing and you you mentioned some details, and honestly, you don't need to mention anything that makes you uncomfortable. But as I was telling you, I have unfortunately come across some competitors who said, for example, let's say they've been through domestic violence or they said they depressed, and then you actually dig in and there's kind of making it up because they think it's the right yeah. thing to say. And I ask you the same thing and very obviously – I was just thinking about this before the interview. In a way, I feel like we're lucky to actually have you here, like <laughs> actually alive without exaggerating too much. So, I mean, can you give us a bit of background as to that side of your life? Because it certainly has not been all easy. I mean, you've got the no. CR on your head, you've got the sash, but it's not, all, it's not been all easy for you. No, definitely not. And I think pageantry kind of saved me from it a bit. Um, I was bullied heavily in high school. Um, and I think it was mainly, mainly about my looks or my weight. Um, eventually it came to the point where I started starving myself and I gained an eating disorder and it went on for a couple of months without anyone noticing until I eventually dropped so much weight that the teachers had noticed. Yeah. I went, it got taken to the principal, my parents, I had to go to the doctor. They kind of said, I was just sitting below where my body weight should be. Uh, the doctor said if I continued going the way I was going, I would be diagnosed as anorexic. Right. I had to go see a psychologist and they kind of diagnosed me with anorexia of the mind because what I was seeing and thinking wasn't the reality. Mm. And still at that point, I hadn't really admitted to myself that there was a problem. Um, it wasn't until, and not very many people know this story, <laughs> it wasn't until I was actually home alone one day and... I hadn't eaten and it was probably about two or three in the afternoon and I made myself a salad because I was like, you have to eat. Mm. And I took one mouthful and I just, I just started crying. I 
couldn't eat it because I was so convinced that I was going to put on weight and I was going to end up fat. And it wasn't until that moment that I realized there was a problem. Wow. And, and that had huge effects on me because mentally it's something that stays with you for a long period of time. And it was something that I had to fix. I had to fix my health physically, but then also my health mentally. Pageantry helped through that. Um, my first competition as Miss Galaxy state finalist, it was a bikini section. And that's truly why I entered it because I thought if I can get up on stage in a bikini, because up until then I wouldn't even go to the beach. I didn't want to wear bathers. Wow. Um, it was kind of like I was proving to myself that I'd overcome it. And so that helped. Pageantry definitely helped that way. While all this was also happening, um, I also had a lot of issues at home, particularly with my father. Um, he was a drug addict and a lot of people did not know what was going on during high school. Um, it was probably why I was so quiet and was probably why I was a victim to become bullied because I didn't really fight back. I was a very shy person because at home I just kind of stayed in my room. I didn't want to be outside dealing with the fights um, or what was happening. Um, this continued until I was, I think I was 20 at the time, um, where I did become a victim of domestic violence at, as a result of my dad. And that's mainly why I went to Canada to get away from it. Um, it did have huge psychological issues for me. Um, during the event, my dad did turn around and tell me he didn't love me. He regretted that I was born and that he wished I wasn't here. Um, Growing up, I kind of always blamed myself for what was happening at home, and I kind of always knew that he didn't love me, but hearing it out loud has a very different effect. Um, so it was very hard to deal with, and to get over it, I kind of thought, I'll take myself out of the situation. I will move. I moved countries. That's kind of when I realized I wasn't the problem because it, things didn't get better, and I won't go into events too much because it does involve another family member and it is a little bit gruesome. Um, but as an end result, he was arrested for assault and attempted murder. Um, and it took a mental strain on my entire family. And it isn't until now, in, in the last year really, Canada hugely helped. It definitely cleared my mind, got me away from things and was definitely putting myself first for once. Now I can see that as a victim, you're never at fault, which is definitely why I do pedantry now is to use it as a platform to speak out because my story is not unique in any means. Um, unfortunately, so many people go through this. Mm. I'm unique in the fact that I'm not afraid to talk about it. And I think that is definitely something that needs to grow in society. We need to talk about it and stop talk, putting people down for it. You never know who could be listening and how it could affect them or help them because when you are a victim, you do blame yourself and it is a very difficult road to gain confidence again. But I'm very lucky and I'm very proud of the way that things turned out because I used it as an opportunity to grow and to learn and now I can look back and what was potentially the darkest time in my life is now kind of like the fire and the strength that I have now. And I want to be that kind of role model to other people going through that to say, yes, it's hard and I'm not going to lie, it is hard and it's not going to be easy, but you can overcome it. And with the correct support and the correct mindset, there is a better outcome. No, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. That's an, that's an amazing story and, and good on you for telling your story. Um, unfortunately, you're not unique. I guess the severity of your case is slightly unique. Uh, you talked about blaming yourself. Can I ask when did you, do you remember specifically when you realized it wasn't your fault? Um, kind of when I was in Canada and the event happened where my dad was arrested because up until that point, any confrontation that happened was always your to blame. Um, so it was me. I wasn't in Australia at that time. So it was kind of like I couldn't be blamed for that. Mm. That was your own actions, your own mindset that did that. As a result of what you were taking, 
But also now, now that I'm studying, so I'm majoring in criminology. So I've now gone back and studied the psychology behind it. I do have a better understanding um, of the issues that were mentally going on in my dad's head and also the events that led up to it. So I can now understand it, which at the time I couldn't. Mm. But th- definitely being in Canada and when that event happened, it was like, well, it's not me. It's it's you. What, um, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of lessons that you learned throughout <laughs> the, the whole ordeal. What what are the main lessons that you feel you've learned, though, from from going through this? Pretty much just to stay positive, keep your head up and stay positive because there are so many times where I could have just given up and could have ended very differently. Like you said, I may not be here. Um, I could have went down the same path as my dad. Um, so just to stay positive and to keep going regardless of how hard things get because I always used to tell myself, yes, things are hard, but there's always someone else in some other situation that is doing it harder. And if they're getting through it, why can't I? That that certainly applies to most people. I, I guess it does apply technically to yourself, but I guess in your case, I'm hoping there aren't. There's. I hope certainly there's someone listening to this who's doing it harder than you had to do. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I guess if I can just make it specific. I mean, how old are you now? If it's not rude, you're what, 23? I'm 23, yes, correct. 23. So if I took you back to, let's say, 15 or 16, and you could talk back to the person that you were then, what w- what would you say to that 15 or 16-year-old? Don't listen to what everyone's saying. Um, be proud of who you are and be happy to be unique. There's nothing wrong with being different. There's nothing wrong with standing out and not following the crowd. Um, yeah, don't listen to what people say. Don't don't try to reflect other people and be an image of other people because then you're not being true to who you are and you lose yourself. Now, who who was your strongest support going through all this? I mean, I hope you had some support. You may not have had, but who were your strongest sources of support? My mum's definitely always been there for me. Um, I'm not the type of person that opens up a lot, mm-hmm. but she's always been there for me and always known when something's wrong. Um, and regardless of what's happened, she's been there by my side. So my mum's definitely been the backbone for me. So after the event with my father happened, coming back and then being able to be the strength of my mom was kind of like repaying her for everything that she'd done for me. It's amazing what mums sometimes do. I mean, regardless of what they're going through, and in your case, your mom obviously was going through something horrific. Yes. That they can still um, be there for their children. It's absolutely amazing. Yes, um, 100%. Just just to flip back to the pageant for a sec, and this may not be related to maybe, but let's say you were to win or at some point you are to win a title, what would you hope to do with that title? So you may win for a year. What would your goals be for the mm-hmm. year of your reign? Um, definitely to use it as a platform to speak out. Um, a lot of people look up to girls in pageantry. Um, just It's not all about the sash and it's not all about the crown. Using that, though, as a networking to go to different events and to speak. And I definitely want to share my story and to speak out and be a role model for young girls is hugely what motivates me and drives me in pageantry. So that's definitely something I'd want to do uh, if I was given a title Um, because I think it's definitely something in society that is our downfall. Um, There's... It's growing now, but it has been a very hush, keep quiet, don't speak about it. Wow. Okay, as I said, that that was an absolutely amazing story. Um, so, I mean, what what do you, do you have, do anything to relax? I mean, I feel like I need <laughs> I, I need to, to brighten the mood here a little bit, lighten the mood here. I mean, that's some proper, properly heavy stuff, and it's good that there is a pageant competitor who's willing to talk about that stuff because it is very difficult mm-hmm. to talk about it. Um, but what, what do you do for fun? There must be something that you do to, to cut loose, even, even during those dark years. I mean, I can't imagine that you made it through without something to sort of blow off steam. Um, I used to love just going down to the beach, just sitting there and listening to the waves. Um, now I'm a travelholic. <laughs> I, I love travel. So my partner actually works in the mines, so he's away for two weeks and then comes back for one. 
uh, we often like when he's back, we go on road trips, we go on holidays. Um, I mean, I've already been on two holidays already and it's just the start of the year. So, it's um, only March. I know. <laughs> How can you have been on two holidays already? Uh, yeah, I love to travel. I told you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I went on a road trip in January and I've just got back from Bali last, just two weeks ago. Wow. And you're in, you're in WA, aren't you? Yes, I am in Perth. Yeah. So, I mean, you could go for a road trip for eight hours and still be in WA. So, I mean, yeah, we don't like that in WA. <laughs> where, I, I mean, I love Perth. I love the energy. I've been over there a couple of times. Whereabouts did your road trip go? Um, so, we did Busselton, Albany, and Esperance, if you know. Ben. I know Esperance. Oh. I, don't, I don't know the others. Um, but I, I love Perth. I wouldn't say it's the busiest town in the it's- world. No, no, it's nice and relaxing here. But that's actually that's actually why I love it. I love the hashtag Perth is okay. I just find <laughs> Or just another day in WA. Yeah, and it just sounds like so sort of disarmed. It's like, hey, Perth is okay, but it's actually a really big hashtag on social media. It is, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Danica, for people to follow your journey, I'll get you to give us whatever details like social or otherwise that you want and whatever you say in the edit, I'll actually, you know, subtitle below in case people can't, can't spell it. But what are the best platforms to get you on? Um, I'm mainly on Instagram. So it's my handle is miss underscore Australia underscore IUM. Okay. And that's simple because you'll see after you get to watch this because you, you, you don't get to see how we look. No. That, <laughs> ha- that handle has been underneath your video the entire time. So um, if people if people can't. Well, if people can't get to get to you through that, then there's no chance. Okay. Well, Danica, we always finish with the same 10 questions. Mm-hmm. And this is about as pageant as we get. So good luck. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is unique. Yeah, I think we, we should all be unique. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Number two, what is your least favorite word? Worthless. I don't think anyone should be made to feel worthless. Yeah, absolutely. Question three, what turns you on? Um, bit of a cliche, but traveling and exploring. I want to see and do as many things as I can around the world. What's on the top of the travel bucket list? I mean, I assume that you're traveling again next week or maybe after you get off this interview, you're, you're off somewhere else. So what, <laughs> where's next on the travel list? Um, I haven't got anything planned until America. So America's next oh, wow. on my travel list. Yeah. Okay. We're doing a full month though because I've never been to America. So wow. doing America and Canada because I'm going with my boyfriend who's never seen Canada before. So I'm going to show him where I used to live. Whereabouts are you going in America? Uh, so we're flying into New York, do New York. Then go down to New Jersey for the pageant, uh, Washington, um, also doing LA and Vegas. And, but we're doing Toronto, Vancouver, and Whistler on the Canada side. Wow. That actually, uh, that's, that's going to be a packed month. You're going to have some yeah, fun well, with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Question four, what turns you off? People that think they're more privileged than other people. Sounds yeah. like you had some experience with that. Yeah, a little. <laughs> okay. Question five, what sound or noise do you love? Maybe animals, regardless of what animal. Literally any baby animal? Yes. It's just, they're so cute. <laughs> doesn't matter what noise they make, especially goats. I love goats. What sound does a baby goat make? I don't want to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I, goats are the ones that go bad. No, that's a sheep. Yes, but a goat's very similar, though. It's not much different. Well, uh, give give us a hint. What what sound does a baby goat make? <laughs> that that actually came through really well. I feel <laughs> I feel like I was there. Alan section. We we know what you should do. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, people cracking their knuckles. Ugh, drives me crazy. Yeah, I've, I've had people cracking their necks. If you oh, no. Cracking, no, they, they make a noise and you, you, afterwards you look at them and go, you should be dead now. That's that's not a noise. You know, like crack, like, oh, you're still alive. Okay. <laughs> Why are you standing? <laughs> exactly. Question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick and Why? 
uh, to be able to speak any language. It would make traveling very easy. <laughs> that would. Do you know? Do you speak any other languages? No. Um, I really wanted to learn French. I just haven't had the time to do it. Well, I mean, you come from Perth, so you do speak WA, which is slightly <laughs> different to. to we've got our own. We've got our own slang. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do. All right, so French would be the first language. Yes, French. <laughs> do you know any French phrases? Merci beaucoup. You, you know what you said, right? No. Bonjour. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you're joking. Just those French terms that I know. <laughs> well, merci beaucoup means thanks a lot. There we go. And bonjour means hello. Hello. I know I know bonjour means hello. <laughs> okay. And if you want to say my name is Danica, it's Je m'appelle Danica. Je m'appelle Danica. There we go. Already learning it. You've got a good accent. You've got a good accent. There's future here. Okay. Question eight. <laughs> Um, what occupation other than your own would you most like to attempt? To be a veterinarian at a sanctuary. I nearly went down that path before I did counter it. I can't say that. I think those two are very similar. Completely different. <laughs> Unless counterterrorism involves animals. No, I have a very uh, vast array of interests. <laughs> so I, it was very difficult to pick which one I wanted to go for. Okay. Um, before we get on to question 9 and 10, you have MZ Whitfield who says, Love you, Danica. Such an inspiration. Keep shining. Oh, love you too, Emma. <laughs> Guys, if you're listening and I can see some of you are watching, if you have any questions for Danica or simply want to wish her luck, either one, leave it below. I'm sure she would love to hear from you. I've only got question 9 and 10 to go, so you, you've got to get them in now. On that subject, question 9, what occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? A phlebotomist, because I hate needles and blood tests. <laughs> okay, you might need to remind me, and I hope I'm not the only one, what's a phlebotomist? Is it someone who tests blood? The lady that, yeah, that takes the blood from here. There. <laughs> I don't think everyone knows specifically the lady that takes blood from you. Obviously I didn't know either. I did do my homework on the 10 questions. I had to research it, to be fair. <laughs> Okay, but, well, bonus points. This can be your optional for the interview. Spell phlebotomist. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't even think it begins with F. I think it's it's P H L. No, P H A. I don't know. Not even gonna attempt it. I can't your, spell. What was your answer? Hands up. I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You've done pretty well. If you got P H. All right. Final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? We have an all-you-can-eat vegan buffet waiting for you. Okay, that's awfully specific. Are you vegan? Yes. So I get very excited when there's vegan food. Just, I don't know how it is in Perth, but in Sydney it's pretty hard to come by. How long have you been a vegan for? Uh, for vegan three, coming up three years in May. And any particular reason why? Uh, and I'm not judging you because I used to be one and I was a raw foodist. So that's like a vegan who can't even cook stuff. So I'm not judging at all. So no, absolutely not. Um, I started out in 2010, so quite a while ago. Um, I was on a dare, actually. Someone said that I couldn't give up red meat and I'm too stubborn to let them win. So I didn't eat red meat for a good oh, three, four years. And then I got into animal rights, became a vegetarian. Yeah. Was vegetarian for a little bit, um, and then I did further research, and yeah, just for health reason and animal rights again, I became vegan, and I've been that now for nearly three years. I, I completely agree with you. I think actually it's it's go meatless march or something, just as a yes. crazy coincidence. So um, so good for you. Uh, now you have Bridget Donnelly. Is this your mum? Oh, that's my mum. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make that face. Bridget Donnelly has written, love you, such a brave girl, and X. <laughs> love you too, Mum. <laughs> She's in the other room. She's oh. <laughs> yeah, the very first time I did a live interview was with um, uh, Michaela Rose Fowler, who's now Miss Intercontinental Australia 2018. When she was doing her interview, her sister was in the opposite room giving her grief, telling her not to steal chocolate and that she was going to hide the chocolate in the freezer just so Michaela couldn't get it. She had her whole family. <laughs> By the time we finished the interview, that interview had over a thousand views. 
And I think a thousand of them were, were Michaela's direct family. Wow. So you've actually got away pretty easy. You haven't got people bagging you out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Viewers. <laughs> Don't know. It could, it could go downhill from here. Um, but Danica, look, thank you so much for your time and best of luck. Thank you so much. Everything. What is your, I mean, you've got four months to go. So what's preparation for you going to look like over the next four months? Um, I love spreadsheets. So <laughs> I have weekly set out different appearances that are happening around Perth. I Each week I want him to work on a different aspect of my walk. Mm -hmm. um, I've also got my pageant coach. So I'll be meeting with her coming up closer to going to internationals. Yeah, I've also, you can't see it, but I've, I take it, took it down because it was behind me. I had like a wall of different quotes and um, yes, every morning I get up and I read the quotes yeah, for inspiration. Sounds good to me. I mean, on that subject, you said you're doing appearances. Are there any charities in particular that you particularly support or particularly identify with? Um, not at the moment. I'm just pretty much going to different charities because I have very different, what I support kind of is very broad. So. Any, I'm just going to different things. Recently in Bali, I actually went and visited the Jodie O'Shea orphanage and donated to the children there. Um, I love um, the Shenton Dog Rescue. Um, so I've gone to them a few times today and I'm hopefully be going there very soon. Um, yeah. Perfect. Well, you certainly seem very multifaceted. Yes. <laughs> Lots of layers. <laughs> any, any unusual facts about yourself that no one else knows? Oh, God. Um, we'll finish on this. Give us an interesting fact about yourself that no one else knows. I don't know. Everyone pretty much knows everything about me. Um, <laughs> I'm quite open. I don't really know. That's a hard one. You're not double jointed or have two hearts or secretly have three hands or anything like that. I'm aware of. I can do all the tongue tricks. Like, do you know, you like you do like the cauliflower, like you do the. Do you want me to do it? Sure. <laughs> if you can, whilst you're like, oh, God. <laughs> I oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something that you can't unsee. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. I thought you just had, like, tongue tip of your nose thing. But that's as far as I no. went. Okay. And I can, like, attach, like, the front of my tongue back to the back of my tongue and, like, hold it over. Yeah. Interesting, actually. Apparently, everyone can actually do it. You just have to train yourself to be able to do them. I feel I would choke on my own tongue if I tried that. Like I it just took me a couple of tongue. weeks to learn that one, yeah. Did you not have anything else to do over those couple of weeks? You just... I actually did it uh, in high school. Actually, surprisingly, in science. Now I'm doing a science degree. Well, I guess it was meant to be then. Okay. Well, I will let you go, Danica. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I'm you so much thank... for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for watching, whether it's live or on the podcast or back on YouTube. And if you want to follow Danica, her handle is right there at Miss underscore Australia underscore IUM. And um, we'll just speak to you next. Hey, it's Adrian. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with our interviews, then make sure to subscribe by clicking here. If you'd like to watch some of our interviews right now, then click here. And also make sure to follow us on all our socials right here. Speak to you next time.